The very fact that we're alive here right now watching this video means that our ancestors have survived. The people that have come before us for tens or hundreds of thousands of years lived, reproduced, and as a result, we are here today. Because they've survived so successfully, maybe what they ate can tell us something about what we should do today to live long and healthy lives. Let's get into it. This has been a popular topic of conversation recently, the idea of eating like our ancestors. And as you can see from the introduction, there may be a little bit of merit to it because our ancestors did in fact survive, otherwise we wouldn't be here today. It may also be a little bit of an oversimplification because the fact that our ancestors survived doesn't tell us anything about their quality of life or their health. Because in order to reproduce, we don't necessarily need to live too long just to get to the age of reproduction. If we die after that, natural selection doesn't necessarily care. And so as you can see, it's a little bit more complicated than just our ancestors surviving because these days we don't just want to survive. We also want to thrive. We want to live long, healthy lives into our 70s, 80s, 90s, maybe even 100s. But anyway, let's take a look at what our ancestors might have eaten and let's see if that could be beneficial for our health. So let's start out by looking at some of the evidence and this is one of the reasons why humans were and are so successful. It's because we are able to eat a broad range of different foods. Anthropologists call this being opportunistic omnivores. Essentially, we ate what was available. If there were plants, tubers, maybe berries, we ate those. If there was meat available, we would eat that. And contrary to popular belief, our ancestors weren't necessarily always out hunting, but they might have scavenged kills from other animals rather than making the kills themselves, especially as we go further back in history. And tracing our ancestors' diet back through history, anthropologists have found evidence of humans eating starchy vegetables and grains, even legumes over 100,000 years ago. But this was different in many different groups. Because humans evolved in diverse locations all around the world, many different tribes or groups would have eaten very different diets, which means it's very difficult for us to define what our ancestors' diet may have been like. It was also varying because of the geographic time period. Just over 10,000 years ago, there was a small ice age. As ice ages came and go, different foods would have become more or less available. And as I've said before, depending on what region of the globe our ancestors were in, they would have been eating different foods. And so one of the most popular things we'll see when people are talking about eating like our ancestors is saying that eating a lot of meat is what our ancestors did. But unfortunately, we just don't have strong evidence about what they ate most of the time. Maybe there were periods where they did eat a lot of meat, but maybe there were other periods when meat wasn't available, when they wouldn't have had access to it at all. And it's important to note that just because our ancestors may or may not have eaten a lot of meat doesn't necessarily mean we should or shouldn't today. Because, for example, the fatty acid composition of meat is very different today. We can look at this even comparing like wild caught animals to modern farmed animals. Wild animals are much, much lower in fat, especially saturated fat. Wild animals as well would have been higher in omega-3, these really beneficial fats. And looking at the historical record, there might even be a bit of a skew in how much meat we think they did eat. Because for example, when we're looking at preserved historical sites, there's often bones and animal remains. And this is because bones can be preserved really well. They're very tough and hard to break down over time. But if our ancestors were eating lots of plants, plants rot, they break down really easily. So it's unlikely that there would be many plant remains. So as you can see, when we're looking at this, it might make us think that our ancestors were eating a lot of meat when maybe they were eating a lot of plants. But one thing that we can do is look at modern hunter-gatherer populations like the Hadza. These are a group of people who live in Tanzania and they're some of the last few tribes left that are living their traditional way of life, maybe quite similar to their ancestors and maybe our ancestors a long time ago. 
And we do see exactly as I've been talking about, their diets vary a lot through the seasons depending on what's available. However, they eat a huge amount of plants evidenced by their incredibly high fiber intake. They may be eating anywhere between six to 10 times as much fiber as a person in a modern developed country is today. And they also do eat some meat as well. And actually, interestingly, a huge amount of the calories in their diet comes from foods like honey that they are able to get from wild bees. And interestingly, they have much, much lower rates of lifestyle disease compared to modern civilization as well. Things like heart disease and diabetes, which are some of the biggest killers in our society. And so maybe if we're taking anything away from this is that it's important to eat a lot of fiber. As we know from a lot of other research on gut health and metabolic health, people that eat a greater diversity of plants and have more fiber in their diet generally have much improved gut health, improved diversity in their microbiome, improved metabolism, and lower rates of diseases like cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and colon cancer, for example. And that can be part of a balanced diet, which can include meat. But we generally be wanting to focus on lower fat cuts of meat because our ancestors definitely didn't have fatty steaks that came from grain fed factory farmed cows. And looking at modern interpretations of the paleo diet as well, it's essentially eliminating things that we don't think our ancestors would have had access to, like grains and all of these modern foods. And I think we could generally agree that it probably is a step in the right direction when it comes to our health. It's focusing more on whole foods and moving away from modern processed foods, which all experts agree are not the best for our health, although they can have a small place in a healthy dietary pattern. But we don't just have to look at what our ancestors ate. We have a huge amount of modern data on what modern people are eating people who are living long and healthy lives. We can look at places like the Blue Zones, for example. These are places in the world where people are statistically living longer on average. The highest concentration of centenarians, people who are living into their hundreds with lower rates of disease. If anything, this is what we're wanting when it comes to longevity. Not just surviving, but thriving. Having a longer health span rather than just a longer lifespan. Because if we're living longer, but we're in a rest home, barely able to move, that's not really a life that many of us probably would like. But if we're able to continue moving, playing with our grandchildren, moving with purpose into our later years, that's more what we're looking for. And what these people are eating aligns with a lot of other modern science, that things like whole grains can be part of a healthy diet. They're great sources of fiber and other nutrients that support our health and lower our risk of disease. And while our ancestors a long time ago might not have had access to these foods, we know today that they are generally beneficial for our health. So all in all, we can probably take a little bit of what we think our ancestors maybe did eat, we know they weren't eating these modern processed foods. We know they were probably eating a diverse range of plants, some animal products, if you want to include that in your diet, as well as bringing in our modern knowledge of science and the world's longest, healthiest lived populations, including things like whole grains. And there we're getting something like what the dietary guidelines talk about. The Mediterranean diet is a great example of this as well. Lots of whole grains, lots of vegetables, lots of fruit, olive oil, healthy fats, fatty fish potentially if you eat fish, maybe a bit of dairy, and maybe meat. But probably not an everyday thing. We're focusing a lot on plant protein as well. If we're doing these things, this is what we know to generally be associated with good health. You can find a variation on this theme that fits with your needs. And so there is some knowledge to be gained from what our ancestors ate. What they ate allowed them to survive and allowed us to be here today to even question this. The problem is we just don't really have good data on what our ancestors ate because there was such a broad variety of different groups of ancient humans all around the world in all different times. Modern foods are also very different because they've been bred over time. Fruits are bigger, riper, sweeter, and the farmed animals that we have today 
have very different nutritional compositions to wild caught animals from the past. All in all, it's best to focus on the data we have available today studying modern humans, as well as data from places like the blue zones where we have the world's longest, healthiest lived people. And summarizing this all together, it's the same advice that we keep hearing. Eat a balanced diet, lots of different foods, more fruits and vegetables, less processed forms of meat and animal foods, and less highly processed foods in general. I think we can all agree that modern processed foods are not necessarily the best thing for our health and our ancestors for sure were not eating them. So I hope this video has helped you a little bit in understanding this question, should we eat like our ancestors? It's a very complex topic that unfortunately we just don't know a whole lot about, but we do know what modern humans can do to live long and healthy lives. And so that is what I'm following and that is what I would encourage you to follow too. But find a variation of that that works for you. That's where working with a nutritionist can be really helpful and this is the work that I do with my clients. Creating an individualized plan to help them meet their health goals because we're all different and we all are coming from different backgrounds and we need specific support to help us reach our goals. If you're interested in getting some support, check out the link in the description. You can book a session with me and I would love to help you on your journey to better health. And if you like this video, if you want to learn more about what is maybe the healthiest fat that we can be eating that we aren't getting enough of in our modern diets, check out this video where I teach you all about that. See you soon for another video and until then, stay healthy.